Hey baddies, it's your girl Bevy, and basically we're gonna jump right into the video. I'm going to do a comparison of like a head-to-head -head formulation comparison of the Shea Moisture Bond Repair Mask and the Mark Anthony Bond Repair or Bond and Rescue Plex, right? Repair Bond and Rescue Plex. Now I decided to do this because I did this before previously with the Beyonce Sacred versus Pattern, so the Battle of the Celebrities, and now this is the Battle of the Drugstore Bond Repairs system. So I did a review a what the F review of the Shea Moisture Bond Repair. So now I just wanted to compare it to another drugstore bond repair treatment, see how they stack up against each other, how they stack up individually and see if either one is worth your money and time and which one is better than the other. Okay, so let's just jump right in. <laughs> So the first formula that I'm going to discuss and go over really quickly, and I'm gonna make this general, I'm not gonna go into too, too much depth, is the Shea Moisture Bond Repair Mask, okay? With a Q-U-E, not with a K. So the way it works, the mechanism of action basically is that it has a lot of ingredients that are moisturizing, um, like satiro alcohol, shea butter, glycerin, to name, and coconut oil, to name a few, that acts as moisturizers, that acts as humectants, and that acts as emollients, AKA moisturizers moisturizers that continue to promote your hair to kind of continue to be moisturized over time. They, it has a detangling and conditioning agent to make your hair more manageable so that there can be more slip and nourishment. Anytime you hear nourishing or nourishment in a formula, always think oils, fatty acids that is basically providing nutrients. So it's food for your hair, right? So usually you're going to get food in oils because oils are going to have fatty acids in them. Okay, so for the Shea Moisture, it has amla fruit, sunflower seed oil, to name a few. So let's keep moving down. So obviously the benefits of this one, of this formulation is gonna be to hydrate and soften dry hair and improve manageability, right? Now I know before we continue, well, I'm gonna continue. It's gonna detangle, it's gonna nourish. Now before we continue, I know you say, well, where's the, where's the bond repair in this? Well, I'm gonna say, you know, and this is just from what I'm looking at right now. I don't see any specific ingredients that are specific to bond repair, disulfide bond repairs, that's specific to building the build, repairing the building blocks of protein in the hair, you know, amino acids, you know, things like that, peptides that, you know, are going to penetrate the cortex of the hair and repair the disulfide bond. I don't see that, being honest with you. Hey baddie, so I had to come on here really quickly to give you a quick update and a quick correction because guess what? Your girl can be wrong at times as well, right? Just like you, I'm learning some of these formulations for the first time and sometimes I may miss something. So I did a video or I posted a video last week about the Bond Repair line from Shea Moisture saying that there was no ingredient that was that functioned as a Bond Repair treatment. And one of my baddies thank you so much um i don't have her name off the top of my head right now corrected me and said that there is an ingredient in there called hydroxy propyl gluconamide um so of course i did my research i put on my little scientist glasses on and I had to come on here and yes, correct myself. So the bond repair line from Shea Moisture does have a bond repair ingredient. It's called hydroxypropyl gluconamide. However, after doing my research, I've learned that that specific ingredient does repair bonds, but it only repairs hydrogen bonds. It does not repair um, disulfide bonds, which is responsible for actually repairing damage to your hair. So if I make this extremely simple, there are two types, maybe three, but specifically these two main types of bonds in the hair. There's hydrogen bonds, which they're pretty much they're just weaker bonds. Um, if we talk about science, really, these are bonds that are just, these are just simple bonds that really are responsible for the look of your hair, right? How your hair looks superficially. Disulfite bonds are much stronger bonds and these bonds are responsible for actually the breakdown of your hair, the reshaping of your hair, um, the reforming of your hair. Um, if you use a perm, what a perm is doing is just breaking down your 
disulfite bonds and changing the the entire structure of your hair from curly to straight so that's what it's essentially doing so a perm works by destroying these bonds so that it can reshape the form of your hair the shape of your hair and create a straight pattern as opposed to a curly pattern so when you're repairing your disulfite bonds you're literally reversing this this damage that you're causing to your hair from using a perm so i said all that to say and let's make this extremely simple so that i don't make this overly complicated because it can get more scientific when you're repairing a hydrogen bond you're not really repairing anything all you're really doing is influencing how your hair behaves so a good example of this is like you're blow drying your hair and then you make your because you're blow drying your hair you're straightening your hair temporarily at that moment um and making your hair straight when you're straightening your hair from blow drying your hair, you're compromising your hydrogen bond, which is only temporary because you're temporarily changing your curl pattern to straight versus a disulfite bond when you are permanently changing your, you're breaking, you're, you're destroying your disulfite bonds, which formulates the curl or the S or the Z shape, right? Of your, of your hair to making it completely straight because you're destroying the disulfite bond. So when you're using um, a bond repair that only repairs hydrogen bond all it's doing is giving you a really nice curl it's really bumping up it's making your curl pattern really nice but it's not repairing your hair it's really the impact that it's having is just underlying it has nothing to do with the hair shaft underlying all it's doing is giving you superficial benefits at that moment and making your curl look the prettiest that it's ever looked when you're repairing a disulfide bond, this is more involved. This is a chemical treatment that's literally restructuring it, restructuring these broken bonds, okay? So it's taking that permed hair that can no longer perm, and it's trying to repair. It's reshifting the chemical structure of your hair, trying to repair your hair and turn it back into curls. Now, this process can be very intensive and hard. I'm using perm as an example. Most of us are just gonna big chop, right? And just start all over, which might be the better recommendation because it takes a while to do this but that is the intensity of repairing a disulfide bond the impact overall of repairing a disulfide bond is that it's repairing and it's altering the underlying underlying structure of your hair that's what it's doing so it's it's rebuilding the broken bonds it's improving your hair strength and elasticity so this is therapeutic benefits this is not superficial benefits I said all that to say, I go back to my initial point that I don't recommend the Shea Moisture Bond Repair Treatment for bond repair because it is going deeper than your average deep conditioner. This may just be an elevated deep conditioner. This may be a deep conditioner that just goes a little deeper into the hair shaft to give you the bombest curls, the most beautiful curls. So if you have healthy hair and you just want your curls to just bounce at its bounciest, by all means, this Shea Moisture Bond Repair line is good for that. But if you really have damaged hair and you're looking for damage repair, this is not going to do it. That ingredient that's in this Bond Repair line for Shea Moisture is only there to repair hydrogen bonds, is not a disulfide bond repair. So for marketing's sake, they can say that it's a bond repair treatment because it is a bond repair. It's just a hydrogen bond repair, which is only making your curls prettier. It's only making sure that you're bounced back so this might be a good line if you constantly straighten your hair like if you're constantly blow drying and you want to bounce back to curly this may be the perfect line for that but if you really want to repair your damaged fried hair or your hair that's damaged from overly chemically processing and overly processing your hair you need something that's going to repair disulfite bonds. And in this specific case, I still recommend Olaplex K18. And I'll look for more disulfide bond repair treatments in the market. Hopefully there may be one that's a little bit more affordable because I know affordability is what we're lacking. But if you want efficacy, you might have to save your coins to get the actual disulfide bond repair. I hope I was not confusing. Hydrogen bonds only make your hair feel great. You don't repair them. You're just replacing. You're just ref you're fixing them. You're just making them bounce back. You're just going from straight to curly. It makes your hair feel really great. Repairing your disulfide bonds is actually repairing damaged hair. Okay? And it has therapeutic benefits. All right, baddies. Thank you.
Now let's go into formula two, which is the Mark Anthony Repair Bond Rescue Plex. Now I chose this one specifically because I see it all the time. I typically like Mark Anthony hair care stuff. Not all. There's some things that I'm like, nah, I'm not messing with that. But their curl cream, I talked about it plenty of times. Definitely Chef's Kiss, one of my favorite curl creams. But again, you know, it's just a, it's a brand that you're going to find at Target. You're going to find at CVS, Walgreens, whoever, Walmart, right? Hey baddies, it's your girl Bevy and I'm interrupting you really quickly because I have to ask this very important question. Why am I not at 100K subscribers yet? Let's keep it a buck. I'm giving you real content. I'm dropping game for free and I have loads of comments, okay? Loads of comments from my baddies saying that my content has helped them on their path to hair regrowth, okay? Effective hair regrowth. So please, okay, help a sister out. Start liking, okay? Liking these videos to help me in the algorithm. Subscribe to this channel. Share this content with your friends that may or may not be honest about whether or not they need my help, okay? And most importantly, I'm dropping a hair growth serum very, very soon. Please click the link down in the description box, okay? And leave your information so that you can be the first to know. I'm about to turn the hair loss treatment, okay, space upside down on its head because the gatekeepers don't look like me and I'm about to fix that, okay? I'm looking out for your interests. I'm really helping you because I really care. This is my mission and I need your support. So that's all I had to say, okay, continue on. So let's look at this. So the mechanism of action, this is going to, just like the other one, it has moisturizing agents, emollients in it, like satiral alcohol, glycerin. In this case, this one has propane dial, which is, I think, a lot better of an emollient rich, you know, because propane dial has like two fatty alcohols in it that's also nourishing. So propane dial, I think, is one of like, if you if you see propane dial as an emollient or moisturizing agent, it's pretty good to have so it's also a humectant that's gonna trap and lock in moisture so this is really good for trapping moisture locking in moisture and it's good for adding moisture detailing conditioning same thing nourishing this one nourishes as well it conditions this conditions creates a film right over so when you hear film think waxiness over the strands of the hair to lock in moisture to protect it from damage you know cleaning and and, and this one's a little weird because it also has some cleaning conditioning agents it has mild surface in it and I don't know if it does that because it wants to create a cleaner environment a better environment for absorption that's my anecdote that's how I see it but whatever right so now the benefit overall like I said moisturizing detangling nourishing conditioning and some mild cleansing to remove oils and dirts and everything now these are both bond repairs by the way okay I didn't say they were I'm saying this is what they say they are based on the marketing on the packaging so if I do a comparison a split to split down the middle. Both have water and satiral alcohol as their base ingredients, which are good, right? They're good. Moisturizing, Shea Moisture has Shea Butter and Glycerin. Mark Anthony has Glycerin and Propane Dial, okay? Up to you, which one you like better as a moisturizing agent. Do you like Shea Butter better or do you like Propane Dial better? Listen, if, if you want them both, why not have Propane Dial and Shea Butter and Glycerin? Not I mean, but uh, listen, I'm telling you what they have. They both have detangling agents, which are like the, the weird names that nobody knows. So I'm not going to even go into them. And you know, they both have nourishing properties, right? So Shea Moisture has the amla fruit, the sunflower seed oil, and they have amino acids. We're gonna talk about amino acids in a second, really quickly. Mark Anthony has rice bran oil, hydrolyzed quinoa, and vitamin E. So let's stop there for a second. Shea Moisture has amino acids. It doesn't tell you exactly which ones and what, how powerful to what concentration or whatever. But amino acids is responsible for pretty much repairing what we call the, they're good for repairing like the scaffolding of the hair. Usually when you see amino acids, think protein treatment right? Amino acids is also very important in bond repair as well because essentially it's helping the building blocks, restoring the building blocks of the protein of the hair and we know that hair is made up of 95% keratin. Now what I see here is kind of like they sprinkled amino acids on it like paprika at the end, you know like I don't know if people still doing that but you know back in the day when people was cooking on you know like on Instagram and stuff and when they finished they just sprinkled the dry paprika on everything just so that it could look like something 
but real, real, real cooks, if you know, you know, you're not, you're not sprinkling dry paprika on your food to, to make it look like something, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like they just sprinkle some amino acid or I don't even know what kind, what form, how, what concentration, what strength, what delivery system, I don't know. Just an amino acid. It could literally just been like a dash of amino acid on there. And because they have amino acid, they can probably use the term bond, right? Now for Mark Anthony, they have hydrolyzed quinoa. Now hydrolyzed quinoa is a strengthening agent. It's protein essentially, right? And there's a very small nuance between, between protein treatments and bond repairs, right? Some people try to use them synonymously, but because you have, you know, leaders in the game, the bond repair game like K18 and Olaplex that really set the bar high, you can't really just put ingredient for protein treatment in a protein treatment and call it a bond repair. You can't, you know, you can, which is what they did. You can. Apparently there's no bond repair police right now who is investigating these marketing claims because at the end of the day, it's not going to kill you if it, you know, there's certain things that really has to be investigated like hair growth, right? You can't just say you're, you cannot say you can stimulate hair growth if you cannot. You have to legally be able to stimulate hair growth. You cannot make that claim. But a claim like bond repair, I mean, listen, if it don't repair your bonds, it's moisturizing your hair, but did you die, right? So I just wanted to highlight those two things right there because I think that that's where they were able to use bond repair or repair bond in Mark Anthony's, you know, him saying repair bond, he's not really saying bond repair, you know what I mean? So he ain't lying. He ain't technically, he's just saying repair, Bond. Like, know what I mean? Like, I didn't say Bond repair. Now, Shea Moisture, they were a little straightforward because I guess those amino acids gave them a little bit of like, you know, you know, a little bit of gusto, you know, for them to be like, yeah, we got it like that. But anyway, I said all that to say, y'all, these are two basic moisturizing, uh, moisturizing condition. These are deep conditioners. I, like, I'm, my mind is blown because I really wanted so badly to believe in both of them, both of them. And I'll tell you why, because one, I like Shea Moisture and I like Mark Anthony. I don't like, none of them have products that I could say I love every last one. That's with every brand, right? But I like both of them and they're both staples. Well, mostly Shea Moisture, right? Is, is a household name, is a staple. And they're both drugstores, so they're affordable. So I really want so badly because God knows, it's not cheap paying for Olaplex and, and K18. Again, bond repair is not something that you're supposed to be using indefinitely and forever, but it is it is an investment. So, you know, everybody don't have the same, you know, pocket. So to be able to to have something like you know a drugstore bond repair would be dope i'm not saying there isn't a real drugstore bond repair but so far i have not seen it from the two bigger names in the drugstore game somebody please in the comments below let me know if there are other drugs i mean i know there are drugstore bond repairs but a drugstore bond repair brand that really really is a bond repair and doesn't call itself a bond repair because it has a little something in it so these are both basic conditioners now which one is better drum roll at the end, I mean, listen, they're both deep conditioners. Truthfully, there are way better deep conditioners. So if I want a deep conditioner, I wouldn't go for neither one of these two. For me, if I'm looking for hydration, I'm looking for a hydrating conditioner. If I'm looking for strengthening, I'm going to look for a protein treatment, a strengthening treatment. You know, if I'm looking for nourishment, I'm gonna look for something nourishing. Usually that's in the form of oils, you know. Like, this is just a run of the mill. This is basic. This is like deep conditioner 101. Like, so it's just interesting to me. There's nothing really the only thing with the Mark Anthony is that it does have the mild cleansing and I don't know if that's a benefit, right? Like, some, do you really want to cleanse? I mean, this is not a co-wash. It's, you know, like, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm, I'm torn. I wouldn't use neither, honestly. Not, not neither. I wouldn't use either one. That's just me. So which one is better? I don't even care because I wouldn't use either one. Not for bond repair. And truthfully, I wouldn't use it for deep conditioning either. Anyway, guys, I'm sorry to disappoint. Yeah, I mean, some I'm going to tell you I love it. Some I'm not. Like, it's just what it is. So that's that on that, baddies. If you want me to do more of these comparisons, you know, please let me know. I think it's kind of fun. Um, It helps me wean out where I'm going to spend my money because I ain't got unlimited right now. Not yet. And I wouldn't just be blowing it on everything either. But then also, so, you know, it's kind of fun for me to learn about these new products that are out. So anyway, yeah, that's it. That's all. Love you. Bye.